Hi there, my name is Katherine Guidry, and today in this video, I'm gonna be talking with you about how we have done something we've never done before, and we are now using artificial intelligence to assist us in our editing process. If you're a photographer looking to up-level your posing or get a better grasp on pricing, be sure to check out our free guides in the description below. So you might hear me say artificial intelligence and think, whoa, this is kind of wild. This is really futuristic. I don't know about this. That's how I felt whenever I first heard that there was now the option to use artificial intelligence to assist us in our editing process. But I can tell you that although we don't use it for the entire process, it has saved us a ton of time. And I am going to be sharing with you why and how we're using this software to incorporate into our editing. The software that we're using is called Imogen AI. And if you wanna link directly to the software, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in the description below. I should probably add that I have no affiliation with this company. I don't you know, know anyone who works there or anything like that. I had a friend who recommended it to me and I looked into it and honestly, ever since I've been just blown away and wanted to share. I want this platform to be a place for you to learn and grow and learn about things that are helping us to help you in your business. So it's called Imogen AI and what it does is it uses the history of your edits, your edit preferences to actually build a profile and use that profile to edit your images in the future. So when I first started using Imogen, the process looked a little bit like me finding a lot of our previous Lightroom catalogs and organizing them in a way that I could upload them into the software. Once I was able to upload those 5,000 images, which is, I guess approximately, you know, we average about seven to 900 um, images a wedding. So about a handful plus of weddings and sessions that we uploaded into the software. Once we did that, the software was able to analyze how we edit a variety of images, a variety of lighting conditions. So I highly recommend using wedding edits and not necessarily a session, you know, with only outdoor lighting, for example, or a studio session. Try to get um, past photo shoots, past weddings, things that have a diverse variety of skin tones and lighting conditions and all that so the software can really understand how you approach your editing. Unlike a preset, which is essentially just a blank edit that applies the same way every time over and over, no matter what your image looks like, the biggest difference is that with this type of software, it actually learns how you edit different lighting conditions. So that has been the biggest difference and the biggest thing that has helped us with our editing. We don't really use a preset per se, but we do have a set style that we use, you know, generally speaking over and over again. And so now that the software understands that, it's able to edit no matter where we're taking the photo, the type of lighting, and it gets pretty close. That's the thing that I was most blown away by. If you're wondering if the software is really that good, it is. I've been very happy with the results that we're seeing so far. And like I said, it's trimmed down a ton of time, which I'm going to get into that more in a minute. So even just for a sneak peek, for example, we photograph a wedding, we back up the wedding, which by the way, we're working on a video right now that shows the behind the scenes of how we back up our weddings, post-processing behind that. After the wedding, when the images are backed up, I do try to put together a sneak peek or a preview of the day. So around anywhere from as little as five photos all the way up to maybe a hundred photos, depending upon the wedding and where we are in our season in regards to the amount of time that we can dedicate to those edits. But once those edits have been pulled aside, it used to take me about an hour to an hour and a half to go through and edit all of those photos. And I'm a pretty quick editor. But now with Imogen, what I do is I take those images and I upload it into the software and in a matter of minutes, I would say three minutes max, I have a really good start to my edits. I can then hop back into Lightroom. It does run the edits through the software, but then you open up the final image in Lightroom. And then from there, I can actually just tweak and refine inside of the Lightroom catalog. And it saves me so much time. It gives me a good baseline to start from versus like the you know, original file. And so that's a great example of how it saved us on time. When it comes to the full gallery of, you know, 700 to 1,000 plus images, we're talking a difference of hours and hours and hours of time. Whenever I was outsourcing my edits to an editor, you know, it's unfair to expect that, especially if they're editing for other people, that they can turn around edits in a matter of hours, you know, or minutes or whatever, because they have a full roster of clients, right? 
And so we were accustomed to waiting a few weeks for our photos. Now it's pretty incredible. Once the images are culled, pared down, and we've kind of refined our selections, from there, when we upload it into the software, we can get the entire gallery at a good baseline starting point for us to go in and straighten and crop and refine within a matter of minutes. It's insane how fast the software works. The next thing that really um, made a big difference for us was the cost. So when outsourcing to an editor, for example, we were paying um, several hundred dollars per wedding, which was the industry norm at the time. I didn't expect to pay less than that. I understand and realize how long it takes for a human to sit at the computer and actually edit those images. But now with the artificial intelligence, it is charging a fraction of the cost. We're paying about somewhere between 50 to $100 per wedding at this point, um, just to give you an idea, but you can go to the site and actually see what the prices are, or what they charge. And they even offer subscription packages to where you can pay for so many images per month and get that uh, rate at even more of a discount. We sort of pay as we go. I just like that because our business is so seasonal. It has made a substantial difference and collectively for the year is saving us thousands of dollars. Another thing that I really love is that these edits are being tweaked and adjusted based upon my personal profile. These images that I have personally gone in and adjusted and really refined to make perfect, this software is learning that and is making those edits based upon those preferences. Even as I continue to use the software, once they send me back a wedding and I go in and tweak and refine and really make it perfect, I will then re-upload that Lightroom catalog so that the software can continue to tweak and refine and get more and more perfect as we go. Even though my editor was amazing and I had such um, a great relationship and was so impressed by those edits, the software really does hone into the specifics of each individual photo, each individual lighting condition to a degree that we weren't able to achieve prior and I feel like because because of that, the review process for me has become um, exponentially shortened, which of course we all want to have more of our time back. So um, that has been a huge difference for us. I believe there's a straightening feature within the software. I'm not 100% sure of that because I'm still actually outsourcing that to someone on my team. They're going in and they're actually straightening those images and then whenever I review, I'll go in and tweak even more. But I think there may be that feature. If not, they're now on the horizon. I remember reading something about it. So I would look into that as well. So what I'd like to do here is show you the behind the scenes, like the back end of what this looks like. I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can see. I'm gonna just upload a sampling of images about 75 to 100 or so and show you what it looks like to run it through the software and um, you can see the results so right now you can see I've chosen 81 photos these 81 photos are currently in Lightroom these are the raw files so they're unedited and I'm just giving them a sampling of you know some details some indoor portraits their first look we have uh, some family photos group portraits as you can see, location's definitely changing, so we'll get a big sample through Imogen. Have, you know, an evening second line, indoor portraits, um, tinted lighting, and then of course an exit that was inside. So the first thing you should note is that I do have the preview folder labeled by name. Like I wouldn't name this, for example, something like preview, especially if you have more than one catalog inside because then you'll just see a bunch of folders that pop up as preview. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But I would actually name it like Greta and Dan preview or Claire and William preview as you'll see here. So this one actually just ran through Imogen and I'm about to work on this one right now. So we're going to close Lightroom and then it must be closed. All right, so um, let's access Imogen right here. I'm going to pull that open. All right. Once Imogen is open, you'll see that I already have my custom profile built. So I talked in this video about how you have to upload 5,000 photos and you can continue to build out the profile, of course, but that one is already complete for me. Now I'm gonna open my recent catalog, which is gonna be the one that you just saw, and then I'm gonna choose collections. When that pops up, you're gonna see what I was talking about earlier. So if these both had said preview, I wouldn't know which one is which. Greta and Dan's is the one that I'm gonna work on, so I'm gonna name that here, and I'm gonna add those into the program. Next, I'm gonna upload, and guys, it is as simple as that. So over the course of the next few minutes, 
these images are going to render. It happens very quickly. As you can see, well, it looks like the screen recording isn't quite like the full, full screen, but at the bottom, you see that little symbol that's dancing? It looks probably like a little blue symbol. You can't really see the whole thing. But that is every image popping up on the desktop. I'm on a Mac as it goes through the edit. And then you can, of course, see here the percentage. So it's happening pretty quickly. We're already at, you know, 20% of the whole set of 81 photos. So you can imagine if you're doing a whole gallery of, you know, seven, 800 photos, you could take 80, multiply two minutes times, you know, 10, that's about 20 minutes. So it's pretty crazy how fast this is working. And already we have one minute left on this edit. So we're gonna skip this part and we'll cut right to the next step. Okay, so when this step is complete, you are also gonna receive an email notification. So don't feel like you have to keep this up on your desktop. I did receive an email that said it was ready for review. I'm gonna now click download to review. And then from here, I'm gonna click to download the edits. You're gonna to wanna to continue. This just says that the downloaded edits were overwrite any previous edit. So definitely don't do any cropping or any adjusting to the photos before you put them in Imogen. Now I'm gonna open up the Lightroom catalog. And even though this process has taken me a few minutes, for me to go in and edit every single photo by hand from scratch would have taken me probably about an hour to do. And as you can tell from this video, it didn't take me nearly that long. So you saw what the raw photos look like. These are gonna be the images based on my custom profile right straight from Imogen. The next step for me, and you can see, watch, there we go. I was gonna say these haven't received the edit yet and you saw those go ahead and pop in. These have not received the edit, let's watch. And what is really cool about this there are some things that I'll go in and tweak. Like for example, I can see the highlights are kind of down. I'll want to bring the highlights up. But what is really, really cool about this process is that as I am going through these photos that are already edited, look, let me make this thumbnail smaller. This is a little trick you can do. When you make the thumbnail smaller, it'll allow Lightroom to render them more quickly and all at one time. So essentially what is up on your screen is what's gonna render the edits. If you have your thumbnails really big, it's only gonna render those two or three photos like what I had just showed you. But for example, right now, it is actually rendering all of the photos. So the next step that I'm gonna take in terms of my post process is that I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna refine these images in regards to the cropping, just tweaking some of the settings and converting some of the images to black and white, specifically those reception images with like funky lighting. But as you can see, these images look incredible straight from the software. This is where I'll probably go in and do a little bit of black and white conversion simply because I was photographing with ambient light and there was a color cast from the band. This is the final edits from the software. I hope you enjoyed this content. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying the video, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you tuning in. I wish you the best of luck in your photography and I'll see you in the next video.